Hello everyone and welcome in this series of videos regarding neural networks. Today we will cover the basic of it. What is a neural network? How does it work with this basic element called the cell? We will also see how you can create basic logic gates using neurons and how we will implement them as a code in the later part of this video. All of the notebooks are available on my GitHub, so check the link in the description below. Biological neurons have been inspiring our today's artificial neurons. They are able to mix between them in order to create networks. So here what you can see is a simple network of three different biological neurons. Each of them is composed of a body which regulates the activity of the neuron, but also of an axon which will help the neuron to communicate an information from one point to another. So as you can see here, this neuron is able to communicate this information through the axon up to this big neuron here. The interface we have between two neurons is called the synapse. Synapse is all of the communication from the axon of a neuron to the cell body of the other neuron at a specific place called a dendrite. So let's take an example. Here we have this neuron right here that wants to communicate an information to another neuron right here. The information will pass through the axon, go to the dendrite. So all informations are encoded in binary. Either a neuron fires an impulse or it doesn't. This one, as an example, did not fire an impulse. So it doesn't communicate an information at this time. If the information received by the neuron is under a certain threshold, then the information will just fade and not activate a response from the other neuron right here. However, if you can give more information to pass the threshold from different neurons, let's say, then you are able to get a specific response and your neuron will pass the new information through an electrical impulse. Artificial neurons try to mimic that kind of behavior. In the example you can see, I used again two different neurons as the input and I have a third one that will be used as output. So the information passes through the equivalent of an axon that I just multiply by a weight right here and right here. And then I'm able to check if it passes the threshold in order to generate the output. More generally, we call the threshold the activation function. So the question you may wonder at this moment would be, why do we have different weights for different neurons? In the biological model you presented, you have simply one single axon and not much different between neurons. The idea behind that is because when you make a decision, you would not necessarily be influenced equally by everyone. And this is exactly the same for the input neuron you have. You may consider that the input one holds more importance to make the decision that your input two would influence to. And this is why you would have more weights in weight one than you would have in weight two. This whole process is called the data flow because you will have the data coming from the input going into different layers of neurons. Here you have only one, but you can use this output as an input for new layers where you will have different summation and activations in order to train a specific artificial intelligence to provide the output you want based on the data you have. Now that you get the general principle, we can dive into the code. In order to follow with me, I would recommend you to take the git I will provide in the description and simply paste the command. Why so? Because you will have different tools to make the exercises. So you can simply download everything. It's up to you. Once you have downloaded the git repository, we simply have to launch Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and open the exercises. So first we start by importing the library which would be used to check if we correctly implement the functions. And we start by the activate function. So this will behave as a threshold function. If you pass the threshold of one, then you must return a one. Otherwise you must return a zero. So I let you pause the video and try to find out what is the correct answer. And the answer is 
pretty easy. You just have to test if your entry passes the threshold or not. Well, yeah, it worked correctly. Next, we try to find out for the OR gate. So this gate only means that if rather the entry one or the entry two passes a one, you must light on. To do that, I will ask you to not do a conditional function. Do not use an if statement. You may use the activate at the end if you want, but what I want is be able to check if you have correctly understood the principle of weights. So the main idea is that you will take the entry you have here, multiply it by its weight, sum it, sorry, sum it with the entry two times its weight and activate everything. So you just have to complete both weight and I let you pause the video for that. The answer is also here quite easy. What you need is that if your entry one or entry to pass the threshold, then you must return a one. So simply by having one here and one here, if you have in case where you just have entry one light on, you would have one plus zero that you activate, which will return a one. If you have only entry two, you will have one plus zero still gives you a one. And if both are lighting on, you will have one plus one, two, but since you activate, you will pass it as a one. Let's check it and yeah, it worked well. So now we are working with the end gate. Same principle, only use weights and activation function. And you must only light on if both neurons are lighting on. I'll let you do it, pause the video, and then check for the answer. So the answer is quite easy if you did the OR gate before. You will just reuse what we have, but simply change the weight of your neuron to 0 0.5. What it means is that if both are lighting, you will have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, which will allow you to activate. So we check it and it passes. Now we will do the XOR gate. XOR gate works with both AND and OR gate. The principle is the following. Find out something in order to light on if you have either entry one or entry two lighting on, but not both at the same time. To do the XOR gate, we will simply use the AND gate we created and the OR gate we created. So we have both. We only need now to find what weights we must add to both. So I will create the OR and the AND weight. So what I can do is simply lighting when every time I have the OR which means that I will have one every time and subtracting one when I will have the end gate lighting on. It's as simple as it. So you may think that the weight for the OR gate is unnecessary, and it is in this case, but you will see that when we will create our neural networks, we will need to specify the weight anyway. So I write it down so you can think about every time you have a neuron coming, you use the weight of it. On the same principle, remember that you must always activate a combination of neurons. So this is what I do here, and we finish our XOR gate. Yeah, everything is fine. Zero times zero gives me zero. Zero and one give me one. One and zero give me one. One and one give me zero. So now what I would like you to focus on is the NOT gate. NOT gate is when you switch a zero to one and a one to a zero. I let you do it. You can do as you did for the activate function. Good luck. So 
same principle as the activation. If I have the entry which passes my threshold, I return a zero. Sorry, I return a zero. Otherwise, I return a one. And it works. Now the NAND gate is simply returning one, except when you have entry one and entry two, which gives a one. So except if both neurons are lighting, you're always returning one. What I would recommend you to do is using the NOT gate and the end gate. It's very easy, pause the video and do it. So what you do is simply taking the NOT gate and then the end gate and you are able to get the correct result. However, here you used a different activation function, which means that if you want to create a neural networks, you will need to train it in order to match what you need to make it learn by changing the composition of the neural network. And for this, you would use what is called dynamic neural networks. Instead of that, we can simply use a neural networks in order to adapt to the different weights you have, as we did here. Doing so, we're able to have a static model of the neural networks, but just changing the weights. And this is what has been shown to be very efficient regarding time calculation. However, you have certain neural networks, and this is what would be in the next video, which are about trying to change the structure of the neural networks in order to fix the problem you give them. So now that you created the NAND gate using the NOT gate and the end gate, I would like you to recreate the NAND gate, but instead of that, only use neural weights. And to do that, we will introduce a bias. So a bias consists as adding one times a weight to your different neurons combining in the summation before the activation. So if we have then Wn time the end gate, because entry one and two, we also have one times the weight of a bias to add in order to get the correct activation. So I'll let you think about what could be the weight of both the bias and the end gate in the end. Answer is easy, you just fire one every time, except when you have the end gate returning a one. And if it returns a one, then you must subtract a one to your one in order to get a zero. So the weight for the end gate is minus one and the weight for the bias is one. And it's correctly done. Now we have the NOR gate, which is every time the OR gate lights, you must turn the gate as off. And when it doesn't, you must turn it as on. Here again, use the bias as you did for the NAND gate and you will see it will not be very hard to do. So pause the video and do it. Okay, so here problem is not very difficult. I simply retake that up and I rename this to the OR and I have here the OR gate. So I'm lighting every time except when I have entry one lighting on or I have entry two lighting on. Finally, you will create the GNOR gate, which is you firing a one, except when the GNOR gate is firing. So the answer will be very easy after what we did. Just put the answer, check the solution after. Here again, answer is very easy. You just take the gate you did here, you change it to the XOR gate and it will simply create the XNOR gate. So thanks for watching. Uh, in the next video, I will introduce uh, two very simple algorithm using neural networks called the genetic algorithm and it will help us to solve the snake game.